Hello everyone, this is topic 8 and 9, part 2, for exam 2, and actually topic 9, where inverse trig functions are involved. And when they are, as you can see in the little note here, we're going to choose the inverse trig function to be our u. Now, make sure you realize that when you see an inverse trig function, such as the inverse cosine of 3x, that the entire thing is an entity on its own. Okay, and we would classify that, that is the 3x belongs to that inverse trig function. So we would classify that as the inverse trig. Now typically we're used to seeing two things in our, two factors in our integrand. And they're usually of the form of the classes, logs, inverse trigs, algebraic, algebraics, trigs, and exponentials and we choose you in that order. The question is here, it looks like there's only one thing involved, the inverse trig. But the differential dx actually is another factor of the integrand. And then the question becomes, which one of these is it? Well, it's obviously not a log or an inverse trig. I'm going to skip over algebraic. It's not a trig or an exponential. So it must be the algebraic. And the argument as to why it is an algebraic factor is because it actually came from taking the derivative of x. Because the differential of x is 1 dx. And so with that in mind, inverse trig precedes the algebraics. And so it tells us to choose u to be the inverse trig. And this is a situation where you have no choice. You must use the formal application of the integration by parts method. So we're going to choose our u to be inverse cosine of 3x and our dv is going to be dx or if you like 1 dx. And at that point we're going to calculate our du. Now you probably haven't memorized the formula for the derivative of the inverse cosine. So feel free to use your formula sheet. And for the inverse cosine, as we see here, it's negative du dx over the square root of 1 minus u squared. And so fraction square root of 1 minus our u is 3x, but that needs to be squared. And then minus the derivative of the u, and the derivative of 3x is 3. I'll put the differential off to the side. Integrating dv to get v, we integrate 1 with respect to x, and we get x. And I'm going to take one more step. I could have, um, all I'm going to do is square this 3x that's on the, under the radical in the denominator here. So we'll have the square root of 1 minus 9x squared in the denominator, and the minus 3 in the writer. And at that point, you could consider um, the product of the diagonal. That's u times v. And then minus the integral of the product of the horizontal. But it's really not horizontal because I took that extra step. Uh, but that gives us our integration by parts formula. So we have u which is inverse cosine of 3x times v, which is x, and then minus the integral of v, which is x, and then times our du, which is minus 3 over the square root of 1 minus 9x squared, and that's all with respect to x. So at this point, we'll clean things up. And in the first term, we'll just simply rewrite this as x inverse cosine of 3x. And in the second term, we want to factor out any constant multiple that we can from the integral. And in this case, we could factor out the negative 3. So times this negative makes positive. And then let's not do anything heroic here. 
let's just rewrite this as x over, the integral then is, of x over the square root of 1 minus 9x squared with respect to x. And then we see a situation where we have a fraction. And the denominator is a power. So the first question we should ask ourselves when we see a fraction is, because we have to think of our basic integration strategy. When the denominator is a fraction, we ask ourselves, is the denominator a power? If it is a power, we're going to fit the form for the integral of u to the n with respect to u. And I just have a sheet of scrap paper here that I'm writing this out on. Formally, we've seen that formula many times. If the denominator is not a power, du over u, which results in the natural log of the absolute value of u. So since the denominator is a power, if it has a chance of fitting one of these two, it's u to the n. And it will actually work. We can tell that pretty much by inspection. Because if we take u to be this entire denominator, sine x minus 18x, and we do have the x in the numerator, that's going to help to satisfy the du. So in order to set that up for a u substitution, and this is really just a calculus 1 integral, let's rewrite it as x times, and then the quantity 1 minus negative 1 half power. That is 1 half because of the square root, and negative because of the shift from the denominator to the numerator. And then we have our differential dx, of course. Okay, so now it's just a basic u substitution. We're choosing u to be, u to be 1 minus 9x squared. The differential du is then negative 18x dx. Routinely modified by the negative 18, so we have minus 1 18th du is x dx. Now remember we were trying to fit the form of u to the n, or in particular u to the negative 1 half in this case. Look at the leftovers, x and the differential dx. Compare them to our du. We see they match, just modified by the negative 1 18th. So we could fit the basic formula. First term we're done with, we'll just recopy that. And now this plus 3 is multiplied by the negative 1 18th. And then we have the integral of u to the negative 1 half with respect to u. And so we can integrate. So the first term again, just recopy. 3 times negative 1 18th reduces to negative 1 6th. Integrating u to the negative 1 half, that's u to the power 1 greater, positive 1 half, divided by that new exponent, add our constant. And then I'll just finish it up to the right here. We have x inverse cosine 3x. And then minus, okay, if we invert the 1 half, which gives us 2, times the 1 sixth would be 1 third. And then we'll put back our u, and that's the quantity 1 minus 9x squared, now raised to the positive 1 half, plus our constant. Okay, so very important to recognize that the new integral fit the form for u to the n. And here's one other situation that we can encounter. Same premise, that is, inverse tangent of 5x is an inverse trig. It's an entity on its own. The only other factor is dx. And as we argued earlier, we'll classify that as algebraic. And so, according to Ly8 again, we're going to choose u to be the inverse trig. So that's the inverse tangent of 5x. Our dv is what's left over, just dx, or call it 1dx if you like. And at that point, we have to differentiate the inverse tangent of 5x. 
So if you want to break out your formula sheet, here's the formula for the inverse tangent of u. It's du dx over 1 plus u squared. So our differential du is in the denominator. 1 plus the argument u is 5x. That has to be squared. In the numerator, the derivative of the 5x, which is 5. And formally, the differential dx. Integrating dv to get v, we integrate 1 with respect to x, and we get x. And you could have, I'm taking an extra step to show this, but you could have squared this 5x mentally to get 1 plus 25x squared in the denominator. But I took an extra step to show it. But now the integration by parts formula, there's the diagonal u times v. And the product of the horizontal is minus the integral of v times du. And again, that's not horizontal because I took that extra step. Okay, so we have u, inverse tangent of 5x times v, which is x, and then minus the integral of v, which is x, times our du, which is 5 over 1 plus 25x squared with respect to x. We'll clean things up. That's the integration by parts formula. We have x inverse tangent of 5x minus, let's bring the 5 out in front, and again, don't do anything heroic here. Let's just rewrite this, leave it as a fraction for now, and then we'll take a look at it and decide what to do. And we have x over 1 plus 25x squared with respect to x. And so now, decide to evaluate this new integral. And the first thing we see is that it's a fraction. So we ask ourselves the question, is the denominator raised to a power? And recall that if it is a power, we're going to try to fit the form of u to the n. Like in the last example, if it's not a power, we could try to fit the form of du over u, which is the case that we have because the denominator is not a power. And you could see that it will fit one of those forms du over u in particular, because by inspection, if we take u to be the denominator, the difference is 50x, and we do have the x in the numerator that's going to help to satisfy du. So we're going to make that u substitution off to the side. Choose u to be the denominator. Again, this is in an attempt to fit the form of du over u by choosing u to be that denominator. The du is 50x dx. Routinely modify by the 50. So 1 50th du is x dx. This is basically just an integral like from exam 1. We already established u in the denominator. What's left over is x dx in the numerator. Compare that to just, just modified by the 1 50th. So we'll replace those factors, the x dx that is, by 1 50th du. And now we're ready for a change of variables. So we'll recopy the first term. Finished with that, that's part of the solution. The minus 5 is now joined by the 1 50th. And we have the integral of du over u. And we could then integrate that. So again, recopy the first term. 5 over 1 50 reduces, 5 times 1 50th, excuse me reduces to one-tenth, so minus one-tenth, 
and then du over u integrates to be the natural log of the absolute value of u. We'll add our constant at that point. And now back substitute. So we have x inverse tangent of 5x minus 1 tenth natural log absolute value or u was 1 plus 25x squared. Close up the absolute value and add the constant. Alright, so that's it. That's the end of the material for exam 2. And I have a review sheet for you. Post it in Blackboard. And then I'm going to make some video lectures of selected solutions to selected review problems and we'll be going over those in class as well so we'll see you when you're ready